How you doing today? Now welcome to another episode of the McGraw Report. I am your host Harry McGraw and happy Friday today. For, the, for those that are off today and able to watch the McGraw Report, I appreciate your company today. Now today we're going to talk about several subjects. Um, last week you probably missed us. Well, we wasn't here last week, but we definitely had a, a pretty good episode showing. Um, but this week we're going to talk about a couple things. So today on the McGraw Report, we're going to be talking about Election Day 2018. Um, if you may know, we have a new um, <coughs> state governor. Um, his name is JB. Um, um, JB. Per um, I cannot pronounce his last name, but um, we got a new um, governor, and we also um, we're going to talk about felons get their rights to vote, and we also want to talk about Amazon picks New York City. Now, election day was a big day. I hope you voted. I voted as well. Um, a lot of new candidates. Surprisingly, um, Illinois became a Republican state. Now, I'm going to show you a graph, um, but Chicago definitely voted Democrat. But based on these statistics, Illinois was a Republican state. Now, the House vote shared by a winning candidate. So if you see right here, the Democrats have won the House. But if you can tell, like I said, look at Illinois. Majority of the states are red, but the House was won by the Democrats. Now, who did you vote for? Who are you going to vote for? That's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to pull up some information on the website to talk a little bit more about our new governor, see the things that he's going to talk about, see the things that he's going to implement um, for 2019. All right, let's pull some things up. So as I do this, please feel free to call in if you have any questions regarding of the, the election that just passed in 2018. All right. Okay, so let's find out who's our governor. Okay. I'm pretty sure you said this before. <laughs> it's time for a governor who will fight for the state of Illinois. It's time to create jobs here. It's time to invest in our roads and our bridges and our waterways. Who believes that everyone deserves a chance to learn. Sounds Let's familiar. fund our schools properly so that every child gets a quality education okay. no matter what zip code they live in, no matter the color of their skin. A governor who knows that health care is a right, not a privilege. We've got to lower the cost of health care for people. I think it should be universal. That's why I'm asking for your vote in this election. I believe that Springfield should belong to working families in the state of Illinois. We need a change in Illinois. I will fight today and tomorrow, and I will never forget that you elected me to fight. If that's the kind of future you can get behind, we need you to vote. We know what we need. Now, if you voted for this guy, definitely chime in and tell me, are you satisfied that this guy has been elected or are you was disappointed? Let's read about what he's, what's his vision for Illinois. Very, very important. Okay, he says, I care deeply about our state, which is more than our country, more than a century ago, became a place of refuge for my immigrant family. So he has a, he's, he's from um, an immigrant descent. I found to defend against the impact of Bruce Rauner's right-wing agenda and the plan that is caused for working families. That's why I'm in his race. Bruce Rauner has refused to do his job, failed to introduce the balanced budget, and drag our state down the path of financial ruin. Instead of focusing on his consistent, okay, let's go back down. Let's see. So he says he's going to invest in community development. He's also going to protect health care. We heard all this before. Restore and rebuild Illinois social services. Set up children for success. Let's see about this one. Okay, all of Illinois' youngest children should get quality preschool and child care. For decades, I have a f f uh, fierce advocate for early childhood education. The human brain developed more between the ages of zero and five. 
than at any other time in a child's life. Investment in early childhood education has proven long-term impact on the educational and economic outcomes of the individuals throughout their lives. Okay, that sounds pretty familiar. JV is trying to um, protect health care. He's also trying to make a path for um, individuals that um, trying to keep jobs. Um, he has a lot of things going on. So please chime in if you're interested and in seeing if did you pick him for your governor or um, some things that you would like him to do for 2019 just for a topic that we can talk about. Another topic we want to talk about is felons getting their rights to vote. So let's pull it up. Okay. All right. Florida finally got it right on voting for ex felons. It's not just about rights, it's about public health. So, let's pick some points and we can build off that today. All right. In Florida, nearly 20% of black voters were kept from the polls because of the state felony restrictions. In America, nearly 6 million former felons have been kept out of voting booths. Black men are affected by voter disenfranchis disenfranchisement at a rate that is seven times higher than any other group. Ending that discrimination nationwide gives former felons the power to vote their own interest. And most important, that includes voting on life and death issues affecting health. Morality rates among former felons is significantly higher than rates among populations that have never been incarcerated. And health coverage from former felons is spotty. Many do not have coverage upon release and can't get it. Leaving them to deal with a greater prevalence of chronic illnesses such as HIV, AIDS, diabetes. Okay. Let's see more states to follow. Okay. Despite Florida's expansion, this is the right to equal suffrage is far from realized. Iowa and Kentucky still disenfranchise former felons for life. Okay. So that's pretty new. Felons getting the chance to vote. I, my opinion um, on that, I feel like if you are a felon, you should have a chance to vote. The reason why I say that is there are some, there's a lot of instances where, especially in the black community, that we are in a situation where wrong place, wrong time, or just a bad choice in life. And sometimes these choices can turn your whole reality around. And by doing that, you lose your freedom, you lose your right to carry. Um, some instances, you be on house arrest. Um, and when you have a, uh, a felony on your record, it excludes you from a lot of different things that you can do in reality. And I feel like there's a lot of good individuals that um, made minor mistakes or there's some scenarios where an individual can do something that gives them a felony but they could have fought the case but a lot of people are not financially stable in a way where they can afford the proper lawyer for the case or they're just um, intimidated on trying to beat a case that might give them way more numbers I mean um, way more years than they anticipated on so a lot of people take them um, take the bid, take, take um, whatever the plea is, just to be able to go see their family. So if you're an individual, you get in a situation where um, you have to take the plea. And when you take the plea, you're like, hey, I'm going to take this plea. I'm just going to get out the situation the best way I can. And it excludes you from being able to vote. So I feel like um, giving felons a second chance at voting is very crucial, especially for um, the presidential um, election that's um, coming up very, very soon, um, next couple of years. We also have the Chicago mayor um, for next year in February. Okay, we have a caller. Yeah, hello. Yeah, this is James. Yeah, all of them trying to run for mayor. And I think uh, Superman Doe's and other people trying to run for mayor. And uh, they, they, they ain't going uh, to make it. They're going to end up for mayor. Uh, uh, Mayor Daddy Brother. 
Hello? Yeah, and, and, and who is Mailer Daly, brother? What's, what's his name? Uh, Bill Daly. Bill Daly. Okay, is that, is that your guy that you're, that you're shooting for, or that's the guy that you believe that's, that's going to hit that seat? Uh, he might end up getting, uh, okay, just like what Mel Daddy went right, got in again, he might end up getting it. Mel Daddy brother. Okay, um, any thoughts on the governor race that just, um, that just ended? We have JB uh, in office. Any thoughts on that? Okay, now, okay, okay, now, when they had a protest, like this week, and I think, uh, uh, JB Fisk ain't gonna, uh, he just ain't gonna, uh, yeah, no more taxes. But he, he just said that in front of the media and uh so people can listen and then when everything gonna backfire on JB Fisker and the people who vote for him, they gonna end up uh then when when he raises the tax, they gonna they gonna backfire on the people who vote for JB Fisker. My name is James. Okay, James, I appreciate your call. Um, th thank you, James, for that call. Um, yeah, like he said, he said it was a rally and um everything that JB Prich um, um JB Prichner went out and said during that rally he feels like it's going to come back and hit him in the face. Now, I definitely respect his opinion and um, I got to do a little bit more research on that. I did not know that um, Mayor Daly's brother um, is trying to become Chicago's mayor. That's, that makes the, um, the running and the candidacy um, very, very interesting. Um, maybe we should go look up and see a little bit more about him and what's his views on um, running for mayor because that's a really big, pretty big race. So, um, we're going to talk about Amazon picks New York City. Now, if you know who Amazon is, if you're a frequent viewer of this show, we talk a lot about Amazon and how they're um, a trillion dollar in, uh, trillion dollar business at the moment, one of the most um, successful businesses in the United States at the moment. Um, they just opened up a new um a new um new warehouse now everybody was shooting for chicago hey we need chicago to get this um different states but it went to new york so let's pull up an article and see um who is benefiting what is about and if any call callers is watching and want to call in and chime in on man we missed out on amazon or is it a blessing in disguise or you felt like it wasn't necessary so let's pull up something on the web and see can we find some information before i state my opinion so let's see. Okay. All right. Let's see. Okay. New York City and Northern Virginia will be the homes for Amazon.com Inc second and third headquarters. According to people f familiar with the matter, ending in more than a year-long public contest that started with 238 candidates and ended up with a surprise split off, so-called HQ2s. Okay. Let's see if we find a little bit more. Let's see. Because there we go. Amazon said it would hire more than 25,000 employees in such locations and open an operation, operation center of excellence in Nashville that would include more than 5,000 jobs. That's a lot of jobs. And it happened Tuesday. It will be the building of new offices in New York City and outside of Washington. Splitting highly anticipated second headquarters between the two locations. All right, I'm trying to chime a little bit more about it. Okay. Now, my thoughts on us not getting Chicago as is, not getting Amazon is, I feel like it would not, would have benefited Chicago as much people would think it would. Now, as I dug a little bit deep about what jobs was going to come from Amazon being here. Now, I know some, I have some friends of mine that works inside of the Amazon facilities and it's more like packaging and, um, getting things shipping and stuff like that. Now, this location that New York City and Virginia just got granted is not for um, factories like packaging. It's actually for corporate. So a lot of individuals that were going to be working um, in this building was going to be, was going to be um, you know, highly, you know, educated people with degrees, um, 
white collar type of jobs. Now, that's a lot of, 5,000 jobs is a lot of jobs. So it was a lot of people really protesting for this. And I don't think the, the people really realized that the 25,000 jobs, majority of the jobs was always going to be white collar. It was not going to be the $15 hour job that your aunt or your cousin um, would like to get started in. Good rate, that's the, that's the new minimum wage for them right now. So um, I think bringing something like that to Chicago um, could have really, I believe, raised, um, price because price is already a little bit high. You know, we already have property taxes um, going up every year. And I believe bringing something like that to Chicago and knowing that we're going to have um, highly paid individuals um, in the thousands being integrated in the city, which is going to raise um, a lot of things, just in my opinion. So I don't think the people really lost out. And when I say the people, I mean minority workers that um, are not qualified um, as other individuals would not benefit as much as the average man. So that's my opinion about that. But Amazon is really doing um, great things, great things in the sector. So another thing we want to talk about, because the viewer had called in and um, had brought up something named Rob Daly. Let's see some information about Rob Daly, because um, there's a lot of rumors surrounding about the Daly family and how long, um, how they do business and deals under the table. So um, just to inform other viewers of who Rob Daly is for these last couple of minutes, let's let's check it out and let's see what he's going to bring and is he truly trying to run for mayor? Let's see. Let's see. Chicago. I think that's um, daily. Let's see. Okay. Robert J. Daly. I believe that's his name. Let's see. Okay. Let's put Chicago. 20, 2018, 2019. Mayor. All right. Let's see what they got for us. The 2019 Chicago mayor race is heating up. Here is what we're watching. Okay. Unlike voters in most cities across Illinois, Chicagoans are getting a break from the, po <coughs> the political ads and campaign speeches in the wake of November 6th elections. 17 would-be contenders have already tossed their names into the race to fill in Mayor Rahm Emanuel's seat in February. The crowded field will almost surely thin before the end of the month when candidates file signatures to appear in a ballot. But it's likely that the key issues that have defined the contest so far, including gun violence, pension debt, and public education will remain important throughout the race. So let's let's find some stuff about Rob Daly. Cause that's okay. Bill Daly. Okay, former U.S. Congress Secretary Bill Daly, the brother and son of long-serving Chicago mayors, laid out a tough on crown stance if elected in a recent interview. Okay, this is what he said. This is a quote: "There are no excuses for someone shooting someone. Those people have to be aggressively prosecuted." And they have to be punished for their actions, Daly said. Suggested there should be some, some sort of outrage, outrage bill from lawmakers in Springfield in response to the violence. Also in the mayor's mix and Cook County Board President Tony Prerogel, who outlined a different approach in the interview. This is what she said. Better policing cannot be sole solution to the challenging these communities face said Perwinkle, just re-elected to her county post. Like another potential candidate, former Chicago Board of Police, Lori Lightfoot, Perwinkle arrested, argued gun violence should be addressed as a public health crisis. Okay. Okay, so it seems like to me that the premise is still the same. Gun violence, policing, Pensions, this all 
all the topics of the future. These all are concerning topics of the city. So if anyone want to chime in and speak a little bit more about who they believe, um, they're going to try to, um, who are the, who are they nominating? Who are the, who, what side are you on? What side are you on? Are you on Tony Prorico's side? Or are you on Bill Daly? Um, who is your candidate? So thank you for coming out tonight and checking us out on the McGraw Report. We do have another episode next week. Hopefully I can get a good guest come in. We'll have a nice conversation. Um, so thank you for watching the McGraw Report. You have a good night.